What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I'm going to go over a big trade I just did. Traded one book and got 15 books in return. Some pretty cool stuff, some books you might not see every day. Let's check these out. So before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So this is a book that used to be on my keeper list and I put up put it up for sale maybe about a month ago or so. I've already shipped it out, so I don't have it here, but you should have seen it in the thumbnail. The book that I traded away was my Captain America 74. Awesome Red Skull cover just in my opinion the best red skull cover that is out there now there are other great red skull covers i love captain america 3 for example but this is the one where he's just that focal image on the front so i had this book up for sale and somebody on instagram reached out and asked if i would be interested in doing a trade or in this case a partial trade and so this ended up being about half cash and half trade and so you know, half of it was cash, and then the other half was these 15 books that I then traded for this Captain America 74. And like I said, there's some pretty cool stuff in here. A lot of books that I don't normally pick up, don't normally buy, and thought it'd be interesting to show, and it's it's no Golden Age. That's the crazy thing. You know, I'm always showing Golden Age, and uh, so for this, it's a lot of copper and, and bronze and some Silver Age that's that's in this, uh, in this trade. Well, the first one here, I have never owned this book before pretty high grade book also cool it's signed this is air pirates funnies number one and you can see you've got uh mickey mouse on the front there uh flying with some drugs <laughs> on the plane uh definitely not approved by disney and you can see up in the top here it says banned from future sales uh and reprinting after settlement of disney company lawsuit so Disney definitely did not uh, did not like this cover, and it's also signed by uh, Dan O'Neill down there, and you can see you know, right here, uh, signed by Dan O'Neill in, in uh, 2019. But a 9.6 white pages signed copy. I mean, pretty high grade book, 1971, so early Bronze Age. All right, now the next one uh, is Air Pirate Funnies number two, and it's a 9.4. Again, now we've got uh, Mickey and Minnie that are that are up to no good, and uh, this guy down here is stealing their drugs. Uh, <laughs> so, so again, I believe there's only two issues in this run. It was just Air Pirate uh, Funnies, Air Pirates Funnies one and two, and it has the same warning up here that this, you know, this they they were no longer allowed to print it and resell this. But again, a high grade copy, nine point four uh, from nineteen. 71 but I just, I thought these are pretty interesting because I've never owned either of them and I don't know how many people really know about them uh, but I always recognize the Air Pirates number one this one I don't see number two come up for sale nearly as often but uh, but number one I see fairly regularly it's a pretty well-known book all right now this one I have actually owned a raw copy of this in the past uh, was not this high of grade uh, this is Evil Ernie number one in a 9.6 uh, this is the first appearance of Evil Ernie, also the first appearance of Lady Death. So it's a double key. Uh, this one, you know, here's the back cover. Uh, definitely one of these books that's a little bit tougher to get in high grade. Uh, has a pretty decent amount of value to it, being that first appearance, uh, 1991, so it's like late Copper Age. Uh, but it's also just that there aren't a ton of these. Uh, it's relatively rare for the era. Now, it's not a rare book, but rare for the era. And uh, 9.6, really nice uh, condition copy of this one. So Evil Ernie, number one. And to go along with that, I've definitely never owned this. I hadn't even, I wasn't even familiar with this book until this trade. This is Malibu Sun, number eight. This is technically the first cover appearance of Evil Ernie, uh, but these are basically like these preview issues. He's not on the inside at all. Uh, and so it's, it's kind of a... It's tricky on saying if it's like the first appearance or not. Not really. I'd say it's like this is definitely like a cameo, you would call it. Uh, but a 9.2, Malibu Sun number 8. Malibu Sun 13 is the one that's really uh, pretty famous from this run for Spawn. Uh, but number 8, I was not familiar with this one. So uh, this is a cool high grade copy. And uh, yeah, again, a book you do not see come up for sale very often. And speaking of Malibu Sun number 13, 
Got that one right here, Malibu Sun 13. This can be considered the first appearance of Spawn. Most people will say it's Spawn number one, uh, but this is really kind of like the first time that he was in print. And so this is 1992, this is an 8.0 White Pages copy signed by uh, Todd McFarlane down there in that gold ink. But the cool thing about this one is this is the error version. And so if you look at the back here, Spawn is like all messed up. It's kind of like, it's considered like a negative print of him. And so this is the error version, which is much more rare. Uh, definitely a, a pretty pricey book for, for Spawn collectors and also being signed by Todd, uh, Todd McFarlane. So Malibu Sun number 13, error edition, signed by Todd McFarlane. So as you can see, not books that I am normally showing on here, but some pretty cool stuff and books that I've, I've never owned, which is always fun for me. All right, now jump into some a little more traditional Silver Age. We've got Journey into Mystery number 62. This is the first time you have a character called the Hulk. And so this is a 6.0, pretty nice grade for this book. A 6.0 is a pretty nice grade for this book. Uh, but, you know, it's got, even though it has the Hulk name right on the front there, but definitely does not look like the Hulk that we know from Incredible Hulk number one, all that kind of thing. But still, this is the first time, uh, and you can even see that here, it says first appearance of a character called the Hulk. And to go along with that, we have this one right here which is Journey into Mystery number 66, which is the second appearance of the character called the Hulk. And so nice grade, a 7-0 white pages copy. Uh, but yeah, the second appearance of this character called Hulk, again, not the Hulk that we know today, but uh, kind of like the intro to a character with that same name. And then sticking with some Silver Age Journey into Mystery, we've got Journey into Mystery number 79 and a 7.5, also white pages. Nothing really significant about it, except it's just a nice copy of this book. Uh, that was actually the... I'm I'm tempted to, to resub this one. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I, I've been tempted to resub this book just because uh, it is a very nice copy. I feel like this one should have been maybe a 7.5 or even an 8. Uh, but this is a really stunning copy of this one. Uh, but we have this here, Journey into Mystery, number 79. 7.5. All right. Sticking with Silver Age for, uh, I think, one more here. We've got, and it's just, just off by one, you know, only off by one. Amazing Adult Fantasy number 14. Not 15, you know, not the first appearance of Spider-Man, but Amazing Adult Fantasy number 14 and a 5.5. And uh, just, you know, one issue, one issue off from that, uh, that first appearance of Spider-Man. Uh, but it's technically the last issue because the, the title changed. It wasn't Amazing Adult Fantasy 15. It was Amazing Fantasy 15. Uh, but prior to that, it was called Amazing Adult Fantasy. All right. Now we've got actually three of the same book. Uh, the first one here is Wizard, or four of the same book, technically. Uh, Wizard number one, that classic Todd McFarlane Spider-Man cover this is the San Diego Comic-Con edition and a 9.8. Awesome, you know, just Spider-Man cover. And you can see it's got that uh, San Diego Comic-Con little stamp right there. Uh, then we've got just the, the regular edition here. We've got Wizard number one. You see this one does not have, see there's no San Diego stamp on, uh, on this one. So this one does not have that San Diego stamp. Uh, but this one is signed by Todd McFarlane again in the uh, the white ink right there. So Wizard number one in a 9.4 signed by Todd McFarlane. And then we've got, so it's different versions, I guess, of this. Now we've got Wizard number one in a 9.6, but this is the newsstand edition. So you can see down here, uh, we've got the, the newsstand edition in a 9.6. So we have the newsstand edition, we have the regular direct, and we have the San Diego Comic-Con. And then we have one more San Diego Comic-Con, 9.8. Again, you can see the little uh, the stamp down there. Uh, so four copies of Wizard Number 1, but three different books. The Direct, the Newsstand, and the San Diego Comic-Con. In all kinds of grades, 9.4 all the way up to 9.8. To then the last two books here that I got as part of this uh, this trade. These are a little bit larger. These are in the magazine-sized cases. The first one here is a Nintendo Power number one in a 6.5. 
think the other one I owned was a 7.5. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, these are, you can come across them relatively easily, but getting them in decent condition like this is a little tougher. Uh, I, my, my brother has, he claimed we had an, an issue number one. I don't remember owning an issue number one, but we definitely had a lot of the N Nintendo powers when I was a kid growing up and, uh, you know, we just used them all the time. So ours definitely would have been pretty destroyed, not in this type of condition, but a 6.5 and then another duplicate here. We have a 7.5 and this one again, looks pretty nice. Uh, I feel like it would even maybe have a shot at an eight. Uh, but this is a, a 7.5, again, Nintendo Power number one. And just one of those books that it does actually have a pretty significant amount of value if you're not aware, especially once you start getting up into nicer grades like this, just because, yeah, there were a lot of them, but a lot of them got used, and so they were just in terrible condition. Uh, I can't remember what that... There was like a 9.8 that sold for like $100,000 or something, just huge amount of money. Uh, that was a couple years ago, I think, during the kind of like peak comic boom period. Uh, but yeah, 7.5. Again, really uh, solid presenting copy of this. So that was all the books. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure there are a lot of people that wouldn't do that trade uh, just because, you know, it's it's a Captain America 74. But for me, I was very happy with that trade. Uh, like I said, kind of about half cash and then about half trade for, for the books. And he's happy with the book. I'm happy with, uh, with all the books that I have. But let me know in the comments. You know, let me know what, what you would do. I'm guessing it's largely going to be that, that you wouldn't do the trade. But hey, you know, everybody has their different way of working through this hobby. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. I've got more videos over here if you'd like to watch some of my other videos. Subscription button is right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.